So, this is going to be um, a little let's code. We're going to be making a little PHP project from uh, almost scratch. We're going to be using a boilerplate and it, that's like a minified version of what we actually use for our big projects. I just thought it was really fun to make this little thing. Uh, in front of me here, I have what we're planning to build. It's like a little lunch sharing inspiration website uh, where you can upload your own meals and you can click and heart other meals. Uh, and uh, Claire's added in the sushi bowl and I added in this little quick yogurt. There's no login or anything. You just go here and upload a picture and write a little bit about it. And uh, then you get to see it and add it in here. And basically that's going to be building. But there's a few funny things that's happening in the background here. All this is rendered in handlebars on server side and client side. And clicking these buttons, it uh, knows which parts to re-render and yeah, things like that. Uh, we have the boilerplate for this, uh, or the source code for this up on GitHub here. And uh, this is built on top of the, um, our little boilerplate for each project. And uh, I'm gonna go through this setup and configuration now just really fast. Um, they're all here if you wanna follow them, but I won't do that in the video because it's, I wanna spend our time doing the coding, not the setup. Now I'm gonna be using something called Cloud9, but I really recommend Code Anywhere or Code Tasty, or yeah, as I said, Cloud9, which is this one. We actually use uh, Code Tasty ourselves in our development as our primary ID, but um, Cloud9 is really easy to set up, uh, set up a virtual machine for free and just have that as a little development environment. And I think that's the easiest to be following along with, so that's what we'll do. Now, once our workspace is up and running, we're just gonna close everything up, uh, delete our hello world, and uh, also delete this readme. You can check it out if you're interested. Uh, and we're just gonna go straight down to the terminal. Uh, this is like a little Linux container that Cloud9 sets up for you. And we're gonna do uh, git clone, and we're gonna call this porleg, which is the Norwegian word for anything you can put on top of bread. Now with that cloned in, we get this little folder popping up here. We're gonna change directory into that. I'm doing this part fast because I want to focus on the code and I want to get into the fun part of this. And now that's everything for the setup. Just gonna start the grunt watch task, which is gonna what's gonna keep things running in the background. Now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to make sure that Apache is uh, set to uh, the right directory. And on Cloud9, it's uh, opening up this folder and making sure that our document root is set to our live folder. It's important that it goes into the live because that's only thing that's gonna be exposed to the public is right in here and that's how this is set up. I'm gonna exit that and save. And I'm going to press run project, which is going to start Apache and the web server is going to come up and running. Now let's preview what we currently have up and running. And we should be seeing something like this, where we have your project. This view has been called two times. Now this is the first time was from the client side on PHP and it runs once on the JavaScript side. And this now set up a database and did everything for us. We're gonna get into how that happened. Clicking this, we are gonna reload this part of the view. But this is just the example setup. Start building our own thing. Now that everything's up and running, we can uh, just take a quick overview here. So what has happened? We have um, got this uh, page templates here. And uh, this contains handlebars and SAS. That's gonna be the main part of the website. We also, all of that gets compiled and put into the live folder, which is what this is serving. The live folder is what's exposed to the public. And this index.php file is basically just going back into our source directory. And now this is where we are gonna do all our good coding in uh, these files. And uh, <clears throat> we're gonna be building the back end of the application. While the front end is where we build in these pages folders. So this is the initial template layout where here comes all of the pages and we can add multiple of these pages dash something name to add in more pages to the website. Now this is just a simple setup where we have our initial test and everything here is running. Let's just uh, start by opening up a few of the files so we can see what we're actually looking at here. 
So, these handlebar files are a bit special. They uh, have got the save as line, uh, a couple of them here, which actually will split this file into multiple. All that is handled by Grunt, and it throws all of those files into here, into a temporary directory, where it will then, where it will serve that those files for both the client and the server. We can see that it's just a normal, uh, <coughs> normal HTML template we got here. Um, basically, all the page rendering happens here, where it will decide which pages to pick. So in the home uh, handlebars file, we got our main PHP, which is what we got here. And if you're not familiar with handlebars, just check that out. And variables are written like this, and it's quite interesting how that operates. And really simplistic in terms of writing normal HTML, which is what I really like about it. Now let's take a look at the app PHP, which is the first file that runs the project. So basically, this is the meat of it all where we are first setting up a database and the database structure is like this and that's just to get an initial start we're going to be changing this up we are connecting to uh, the mysql and if there's any changes to this table it's going to recreate the database structure again and that's really handy for fast development don't do that in production but for development purposes this is great and we also are building our own api which is called in here and we can see our API class. And we also have some routing where we are deciding where all the pages are going. And the more pages we add in here, the more URLs we're going to be having. So we are at the moment just one home directory with a title and um, what file that's going to be rendering with what the API call. That's just an example right now. And this is all being routing together. And I see that the indentations here are a bit mixed up, so let's go into tab size. There we go. And then this all comes together with a little render page, which is going to be taking the handlebars and spewing it all out with a single echo command at the end of it. And that's what's rendering all of this, because it runs through all the database, checks for the routing, which page is going to be rendered, and then it goes in here and takes the, the handlebars template, which is this, and it will take the page we're at, which is this, and it's just gonna render that. And that's kind of how this all roots together. And the beauty of this is the fact that we're only exposing these files to the public. There's That's only what's been shown. Before we dive into making that, I just quickly wanna go through how the API is constructed. Uh, it's very simplistic in its way. It uh, checks if you're doing any Ajax call to it, and then you will do the proper queries. It does some error handling. And then basically below here, you just start writing your own API calls and you can just make multiple of them and uh, write them as you wish. And uh, this API is then used to interface both on the server side and on the client side. So we can deliver the same HTML in both ways, whether you're rendering something, a tiny component for a refresh or if you're doing a full page load. So that is really the, uh, the boilerplate. Uh, now we only need to start grunt to get the process running. And with that running in the background, I'm just gonna throw this one over here. And we can start editing this. Now the first thing we probably will need is to include the name of our project. And you see we got some variables here, such as current page and we got version. Now this is used to is referring to this little file over here in the temp directory under version, which uh, now is at seven. Every time grunt compiles something, this number increases by one and it will cause all of the files to invalidate. So we will fetch a new version of them. And it's very nice to do rapid development, not worry about your browser cache or anything. Um, or if you behind Cloudflare, for example, where it always caches all your files. See that this is working, grunt is running and we reload this, it should now say, Poleg, obviously I even misspell it myself because it's written with a Norwegian or character. And then we're gonna make a little menu. And in our menu, we're gonna make uh, lunches. Create, which is adding your own lunches and a little about page. And obviously these will then be our folders here with our HTML, JavaScript and CSS, whatever those pages need as their little modules of their own. So <clears throat> that always need to link somewhere. Now the, the routing in this application is very simplistic. Uh, we're just doing a slash question mark with a get variable of the name of the page really. 
Uh, you can name them whatever you want or have them translated to different languages and that all is handled as I uh, talked about earlier in here and the structure of this is so simplistic that you can you know mix it up yourself because this is <clears throat> this is all it does in the routing where it uh, goes through all our pages and finds a matching one and it will basically output that one we're gonna add a little uh, class to our logo to make it look fancy and then we're just going to write our little footer. As you might have noticed, um, <clears throat> talking about these variables, we have a few variables that are like that are global, such as year, default data, a version, page, current page, and these ones are all supplied within here um, under our render page. And we just set these as default one. We don't need year anymore and wasn't necessary in the first place was just an example. We can save that and uh, save this page. Um, if we refresh now, we should have a little nav lunches create about, and that works. If you see a little bit further down here, we have some standard error handling and some loading things, which is just defaults, which will be, if there's any issues, they'll be rendered instead of the page or like as temporary fillers while it's waiting for the API to respond. Let's make this uh, look a little bit snazzy, shall we? Now this looks pretty boring. We're gonna just spice it up a little bit with some CSS. In our template SAS, we have some standard uh, helpers, which are set up here. Um, really liking this lerp function. Uh, we're gonna go through that soon. And uh, some basic uh, standard HTML setup. Um, the first thing we need is to get in our fonts. So with our fonts imported like that, we can go down and start writing our logo class. Here we go, we got the font in, we got some nice margin and spacing. One cool thing about this uh, file is the fact that um, here we're using a linear interpolation class where we're setting the font size of the body uh, to 16 pixels up to 20 pixels depending on the size of the device. So on uh, 320 width file um, device, the font size will be 16 and on an 800 uh, pixel wide device it's going to be font size 20. So the font size will change dynamically. Uh, this is uh, a smooth transition so there will be no like jumps or breakpoints, so just like a minimum value and an upper value and this is all calculated automatically by a little lerp function here. I really like to make things look a little bit nice before I get into the PHP get a little feel for it and play a bit with the HTML and CSS and make it look nice. So that's what we're doing. Now the, the thought is that in the template SAS file, so you're gonna keep all your global styles that was gonna go on every page. And then on the home page, there's gonna be specific SAS files that goes into this file. Now for the header, it's gonna be on every page. I'm gonna make that now. There we go, now that looks pretty funky. We're gonna make the main font white. We're gonna use our Roboto slab as the default font. And here we go, now that's starting to look like something. Now for our little header, we're gonna add in a little gradient. Now I find that this view can be a bit hard to inspect what's actually going on. So it can be actually quite a good idea to close that up and have a separate browser window set to the address of uh, your container. Inspect here, header. Okay, it's complaining about that, yeah. Because lighten. Yeah, and now I noticed that we actually have a little typo in our lighten command here. There we go. Aha, we have a little gradient. Not looking very fancy right now, but uh, we know that the end result is gonna be this. So with uh, this goal in mind, we're just gonna start designing. Right, I'm just gonna quickly style this uh, navigation here so it doesn't just look like some small buttons in the top right there. We reload this page now. Aha. So we got this little setup, little hover effect and everything. I see I got the text decoration and I noticed that's because we have uh, this set on like it's high priority. I'd rather have the underline appear on our hover state instead. 
There we go, that looks much nicer. Um, for now, actually, I'm gonna remove the footer because I think that is just so inconsequential and I want to get to the, the fun part. So uh, without footer, we can, uh, we got our header done, we can start focusing on our content. So in our content, we have our home handlebars file here, which basically renders into HTML files. Um, so according to this, we are going to make a little uh, text tag here. Actually, and let's copy this text and we're gonna make this area and have it white on full screen. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. Uh, we might as well use the p tag that's already here. Uh, I'd like to close that files we're not working with so we only have what we need open. Now uh, we're only gonna need the uh, home and the home styling. So the white area, we're gonna make a little uh, container div where the main content of the website goes. And in here we're gonna be rendering our meal. So hello world, let's to get this going. Yes, we have the beautiful orange text and a little hello world. So we don't want the orange text, obviously. The, the content class is gonna be used on pretty much all the pages is the plan. So I'm gonna throw that into the, the global st uh, styles and make a little uh, content class after our logo. One of the things I really like about uh, SAS is the fact that you can do these things to modify the colors with the brightness and the fade out and things like that. And it's very handy way to just like get things working quite quickly. Now, here we go. Now that's starting to look like something, isn't it? Uh, we still have that ugly thing. We haven't saved this file. There we go. Uh, we're also gonna have like a global text wrap class. Now the reason we're doing both the text center and margin auto is cause we want the maximum width of this text to be restricted with our lerp function. So you type with the lerp function, it's not as complicated as it looks. First you just type the width, so it's like doing that. And um, second cool thing you do with it is the, the minimum width, the maximum width, and the pixels of the screen you want that to map to. So when it's maximum of 800 pixels wide, we want to go up to 450. Minimum 320, or won't be 250 wide. And now let's use our new text wrap class on this p tag. And let's see how that functions. Yes, now we have this little nice little thing. And if I change the width of things, you can see everything scales. And uh, the width of this container changes. And as we go down to a mobile size, we can see that the width is 250 pixels wide. So making this all flow really nicely and be a super responsive uh, website where everything from the logo to the menu scales to a little bit bigger size when there is enough space. Now, obviously in here, we're gonna be rendering our meals, but we don't have any meals to render yet. So I think often like the first function to make would be the create page. So let's set this one up. 